Okay, so welcome to this next video in which we are discussing anti-cancer chemotherapy and specifically thymidylate symphotase inhibitors as anti-cancer chemotherapies. Okay, so we are discussing that thymidylate symphotase is going to produce thymidylate and so far we've been discussing what thymidylate actually is. So it is thymine bound to deoxyribose here which is also bound to a phosphate group. Okay, now it's got another name. It's also known as thymidine monophosphate, or for short, TMP, for thymidine monophosphate. Now, thymidine, this word thymidine, this is the name for thymine plus the deoxyribose sugar. And this is quite confusing when you see it for the first time, but it does make sense, okay? Uh, if you remember that thymine isn't used in DNA, okay? Sorry, isn't used in RNA, that was awful. Right, okay, so thymidine is thymine, the organic base thymine, plus the deoxyribose sugar. So imagine cutting that phosphate group off and just having an alcohol group here. That's thymidine. Okay, now why have I said that this is confusing? Well, the reason it's confusing is that if you look at all the other organic bases, so for instance, guanine, guanazine means guanine plus ribose. Okay, so it's the organic base guanine plus ribose. Okay, the uh, organic, um, well, let's take uracil next. Uridine means uracil plus ribose, okay? So all of these names, whoops, ribose, ribose. All of these names refer to organic bases plus ribose. We can continue on. Adenosine, okay? This means adenine bound to ribose. So just like this, but you've got the organic base uh, with um, ribose here rather than deoxyribose. So you'll have an alcohol group on there. So adenosine is adenine plus ribose again, okay? And then finally, the final one, cytidine, cytidine is cytosine, the organic base cytosine plus ribose. So thymidine is the odd one out. You would think that thymidine was thymine plus ribose, but no. Thymidine means thymine plus deoxyribose. If you want to talk about guanine plus deoxyribose, that's called deoxyguanazine. Similarly, if you want uracil plus, instead of ribose, deoxyribose, you would call that deoxyuridine. If you want adenine plus deoxyribose, you would call that deoxyadenosine. If you wanted cytosine plus deoxyribose, you would call that deoxycytidine. But thymidine is not thymine plus ribose, it's just thymine straight away plus deoxyribose. And the reason for that is that you would not want thymine bound to ribose because th these structures here where you have the organic base bound to ribose, those are what are incorporated into RNA rather than DNA, okay? And you do not put thymine into RNA, you put it into DNA, okay? So that's why you do not have a name for thymine plus ribose. Instead, the thymidine just straight away means thymine plus deoxyribose. Okay, right. So, um, how are we going to synthesize thymidine monophosphate or thymidylate? Well, we're going to synthesize it from deoxyuridine monophosphate. Okay, so now we're in a position to understand what that means. So deoxyuridine, we know exactly what that means. That means uracil bound to deoxyribose, and then monophosphate just means that it needs to have a single phosphate group attached to it. Okay, right. So deoxyuridine monophosphate is often abbreviated to DU for uracil, MP. So the D is for deoxy. U for uracil, M for mono, and P for phosphate, so dump. Okay, right. So, I would like to try and squash this structure in here, but I'm not sure it's going to be successful, so we'll have a go. Right, so, um, I think if we try and squash it as much into this corner as 
possible, uh, then that will probably work. Okay, right, so here is the ribose sugar. Okay, in fact, sorry, this is the, yes, this is the deoxyribose, because we're talking about deoxyuridine. Okay, so here is the deoxyribose sugar, so you have no uh, alcohol group off the second carbon. Okay, and firstly, let's try and get the organic base in. So what is the structure of the organic base uracil? Okay, so it's almost identical to thymine. And of course it is, because we're about to turn it into the thymine um, organic base. Okay, so again, it's this pyrimidine ring, and again, it has this carbonyl group here, it has a carbonyl group here, it has a hydrogen off that nitrogen, and it has a double bond here, but it doesn't have that methyl group on. So that's the only difference between uracil and thymine. Thymine has the methyl group off this uh, carbon here. It has a methyl group off the fifth carbon. So I'll just tell you how to label up the members of this ring. So this nitrogen will be the first one, this carbon the second one, this nitrogen the third one, fourth, fifth, sixth. Okay. And now, let's stick the fifth carbon up here, and we'll put the alcohol group coming off up here with the phosphate group, like so. So here's our phosphorus atom, here's our double bond to an oxygen, and our single bond to an oxygen, and then we have our alcohol group right on the end. Okay, so this is deoxyuridine monophosphate. Now, you can see that this is almost identical to our thymidate, sorry, our thymidate, uh, molecule, or our thymidine monophosphate. All we need to do is add this methyl group on. Now, this carbon here, the fifth carbon, it already has a hydrogen bound to it, okay? So, all we need to do is actually get a methylene group from somewhere. So if I draw the molecular formulae of this fifth carbon for a second, so this is what we have in deoxyuridine. So this is this bit circled in uh, pink, okay? What have I done? Why have I put a 5 there? Sorry, I should, it should be a hydrogen there, okay? Uh, so what we need to do is we need to break this bond between the carbon and the hydrogen, okay? Imagine sending an electron back to the hydrogen and an electron back to the carbon. Then what we need to do is we need to get a methylene group, okay? where this carbon now has two free electrons, so a free electron here and a free electron here, bind that free electron here to the free electron on this carbon, and then bind the other free electron to this free electron on the hydrogen to create our methyl group and turn our deoxyuridine monophosphate into our thymidine monophosphate or our thymidinate. Okay, right. So where are we going to get that methylene group from? Well, this was what all the hard work uh, for our N5, N10 methylene tetrahydrofolate uh, was in aid of. Okay, so basically what we're going to do is chop out the methylene group that we've got here. So we're going to chop this bond, chop this bond. Okay, imagine taking one of the electrons to the carbon and one to the nitrogen in both of these electrons case, sorry, in both of these bonds case, and you'll end up with this carbon having two free electrons, just like the scenario we envisaged here, then it can insert in perfectly. That, however, is going to leave this molecule in slight ruins, because this nitrogen is going to have a free electron, and this nitrogen is also going to have a free electron. So, if we look at this carbon here, this carbon only has three bonds, so one of its other bonds is to a hydrogen atom. We will cut that bond between that carbon and that hydrogen, okay? So imagine letting one of the electrons go back to the hydrogen, one of the electrons goes to the carbon. Then what you'll do is take that hydrogen atom and bind it to this nitrogen here, okay? So you'll put a hydrogen back onto that nitrogen, so that copes with this nitrogen's free electron. But now this carbon has a free electron, and this nitrogen has a free electron, so what they will do is form a double bond there. Now you might be wondering, what structure is that going to form? Well, it's not something new. We've seen it before. It's exactly this structure here. We've got a double bond back here, and a hydrogen off that nitrogen. So basically, what happens is you convert N5, N10, methylene tetrahydrofolate back to dihydrofolate when you do this, okay? So, the enzyme thymidinate synthetase, 
or TS for short, is going to uh, catalyze the conversion of deoxyuridine monophosphate into thymidine monophosphate. And in so doing, it will also convert N5, N10, methylene tetrahydrofolate, this structure here, back into dihydrofolate. Okay, right. So that's what this thymidylate symphotase enzyme is doing. Now let's discuss the structure of these inhibitors of the thymidylate symphotase. And they look almost identical uh, to our um, to our substrate, basically, here. They look almost identical to deoxyuridine monophosphate. Okay, right, so let's get another piece of paper and have a look at these inhibitors. Okay, and then we'll have a uh, think about why inhibiting this enzyme is actually going uh, to have an anti-cancer effect. Okay, right, so the first inhibitor is what's known as 5-fluorouracil, and this literally is just uracil with a fluorine on that fifth carbon where uh, the uh, methyl group was going to be put on uh, to convert it into thymine. Okay, so let's draw the structure of this. So here's our pyrimidine ring again. Okay, and we have a nitrogen up here and a carbon up here. We then have a carbonyl group off down here and also a carbonyl group off here. Now, we're talking about pure uracil, so it's not bound to the ribo, well, to the deoxyribose anymore, or the ribose. So it's got a hydrogen here instead, okay? So when it was bound to the sugar, this hydrogen was gone, basically, but we're now talking about the pure organic base, so it will have that hydrogen restored. It's then got a double bond here, and instead of having a hydrogen off this carbon here, it's going to have a fluorine atom. So remember, the way that you label up the elements of this ring is this is number one, this is number two, this is three, four, five, six. So this is, really is 5-fluorouracil. Okay, so you can see that this looks very much so like uracil, but it will go into the active site of our thymidylate synthetase, and it will not undergo the reaction but it will just sit in that active site and competitively inhibit the thymidylate synthetase enzyme. Okay, the next drug we're going to look at, which is again a beautiful analogue of what we know, is 5-fluoro-2-deoxyuridine. Okay, so this isn't now just uracil with a fluorine atom bound to it. Instead, it is 2-deoxyuridine with a uh, fluoro group attached to it. So we know what 2-deoxyuridine is. The 2 is just reminding you that the deoxyribose that you've bound it to has the alcohol group back removed off the second carbon. So really, this is just what we previously called deoxyuridine. Okay, so it's uracil bound to um, a um, deoxyribose sugar. Okay, so let's just draw this structure out now. So here's our uracil again. Nitrogen here. And then a nitrogen down here. Okay, double bond there. And of course we've got this fluorine atom again off the fifth carbon. It's 5-fluoro. And then we've got this carbonyl group up here. Hydrogen off that nitrogen. Carbonyl group down here. And now this nitrogen is now going to be linked to our at sugar down here, our deoxyribose sugar, okay, to create deoxyuridine, or rather 5-fluoro-2-deoxyuridine. Okay, so all the two, just to um, re-go over that, uh, all the two is denoting is that this is 2-deoxyribose, this sugar we're putting here, so the alcohol group has been removed off the second carbon, okay, and then off this fifth carbon we've then got an alcohol group, because we're not we haven't got any phosphates linked to this, it's just deoxyuridine, which is just uracil uh, linked to deoxyribose. Okay, so that's the structure of 5-fluoro-2-deoxyuridine. And you can see that, again, it has a very analogous structure to uh, deoxyuridine monophosphate, which is the substrate for our thymidinate symphotase enzyme. Okay, so it again is going to go into the active site of the enzyme and block that enzyme. And we'll discuss what the significance of these two drugs, 5-fluorouracil and 5-fluoro-2-deoxyuridine, are for cells in the next video.